Nick here and today we will learn how to play Patchwork. This is an easy to play game and can be used to introduce people into board games. It's a two player game and has an average play time of 15 to 30 minutes. In this game you have to sew together pieces of fabric shaped like Tetris pieces on your kilt board. Place the central time board in the middle of the table. It's two sided so you can choose which side you want to use. I chose this side. These are going to be our two players for today. Each player takes a kilt board and five buttons. Place the two time tokens on the starting space of the time board. Then place the special patches, these small one by one tiles on the marked spaces on the time board. Now, Place the regular patches in a circle or oval around the time board. Once that's done, locate the smallest patch of size 1x2, which is this one, and place the neutral token between this patch and the next patch in clockwise order. And for last, lay out the special tile next to the board. Now we are ready to start. The player who last used the needle begins or just do a heads or tails. A turn goes like this. The players can choose one of these two actions every time they play. The first is taking and placing a patch, and the second is advancing the player's time token to gain buttons. Let's start with taking and placing a patch. Current player chooses from three patches in front of the neutral token in clockwise order. These would be the three patches I could buy in this example. Patches cost buttons and make players advance on the time board. The cost and number of spaces you move are marked on the patches label. For example, this patch costs 5 buttons and makes the player move 4 spaces. This other patch costs 1 button and makes the player move 2 spaces on the time board. For this example, player 1 decided to buy this patch. It costs 3 buttons and advances the player 1 space. Let's pay the cost. Now, player 1 has to place the patch on its kilt board. You can place it any way you want, but patches cannot overlap. You can flip the patch sides if you want, but once placed, you cannot rearrange any patch. Normally, the neutral token should move to where the patch you took from the board was. Because in this example, the patch took was the next one, the token stays where it is. Once that's done, we advance player 1 on the time track, with the amount of spaces indicated in the patch. The second action a player can do is to advance its time token so that it occupies the space directly in front of your opponent's time token. This is useful when the player is not able to buy any patch or for strategic purposes. You receive one button per space you moved your time token. In this example, the player advances 5 spaces until the next player is reached so this player gets 5 buttons. In this game, the player whose time token is the furthest behind on the time board takes the turn. In this example, player 2's token is behind player 1's token, therefore it would be player 2's turn. Note that if both players are on the same space, the player whose token is on top goes first, so you can use that in your advantage when planning which patch to take. In this example, the player with the green token would be able to keep playing for one more turn. Let's continue with player 2's turn. Player 2 decided to choose action A also, so the player chooses this patch among the next three available patches after the neutral token, which costs two buttons and make the player advance three spaces. Player 2 places the patch on its kilt board and moves the neutral token towards the position where the patch was. Before you are ready to start, let me just show you two more things. Did you notice the board has some markings on it? Let me explain what they do. The first one of them is a button income mark. Whenever your time token moves one space after this mark, look at your board and count how many buttons you have on the patches you bought. That number is added to your reserves. In this example, player 1 did well and has a total of 4 buttons on its patches, therefore the player gets 4 buttons as income. Player 2 didn't go so well. This player gets 1 button as income. That's why, when choosing a patch, 
Pay attention to the patch size. The more it fills the board, the better. And the button income it gives. The second mark you can find is the special patch. The first player that moves one space after the patch mark gets a patch. Take it and place the special patch on your kilt board immediately. As pieces have different sizes, getting the special patch is good to fill small spaces that might not have been planned. There is a side objective in this game, which is meeting the special tile requirements. Remember this token we placed next to the board? The first player who manages to have a full 7x7 square of spaces on his kilt board receives this token, which is worth 7 points at the end of the game. Those are the basics of the game. Once both players cross the last space on the time board, the game ends. For scoring, count how many buttons you have at the end of the game and subtract 2 points for each empty space on your kilt board. The player with the highest score wins. And that's how you play Patchwork. Did you like it? Want me to do a how to play video on your favorite board game? Leave some suggestions in the comments below. For more how to play videos, subscribe to my channel. See you next time.